This is a 3D printed carabiner, and we are going to break three different types of filaments with three different fill percentages. And the one I'm holding in my hand has 0% fill. I would very much like to know if anybody uses 3D printing carabiners in real life, obviously not for life support, but who uses these things? Because they, they look interesting, but useless. So the three different filaments that we are testing is PLA, stands for plastic, <laughs> ASA, which is another stupid acronym. And the third one is TPU, which is tangled plastic units. Let's ask Chase GPT, what does PLA stand for? PLA, start with PLA. Polylactic acid. That's the uh, stuff it comes with, right? Yep. Yeah. When you buy a 3D printer, that's the most common biodegradable. You need an industrial composter to do so, but better than better than not. never degrading. <laughs> Acrylonitrile styrene acrylate. Uh, it is a fancier uh, 3D printing filament. Um, that lasts forever. <laughs> yeah. Which makes it great to use outside, stands up to the UV and is a little bit more durable than PLA. What do you often print things here with? We use a lot of TPU. That's because TPU has a little bit more of like a shock absorbing quality, better for cases. We cover all of our load cells with these things and call them defenders and we're kind of obsessed about it. So everything has some sort of case on it now. Uh, leave that camera rolling and don't move. All right. Okay. So this is the line scale defender. This is wonderful because I can throw my, well, I'm trying not to throw my line scales everywhere, but sometimes they go flying. <laughs> And they go flying because I pull on them with this thing. And what's nice is that the pulleys are also not gonna go flying. And this is a product that we're working on, or a kit, I should say, where we're able to make a mobile slack snap unit for other people to do the things they see on this channel. So sneak peek on what we use TPU for. What's interesting is the TPU carabiners open all the way, but only close 50%. These only open 50% and I'm afraid to open them any further. So I find them both useless. We will find out which one's stronger. So we are gonna use the UTM because it'll pull a little bit slower and we'll get a little bit better um, control over what's going on. But uh, what's cool is we just added cyclic loading to this and that's uh, manual and that's cyclic. And this has a few bugs to work out still. So we're not gonna cyclically load plastic. We're gonna to go to manual. We're going to move it up just a little bit more and let's install our first sample. It's stretching a lot and not even showing up on the graph. Wow, 0 0.07 kilonewtons. Wow, okay, finally. <laughs> Break test is going to need some assistance. No, it broke on the other side of the gate. Ouch, these are terrible. Give me more than 0.1. <sighs> nope. I give up. Of course we knew it was going to do rubbery. No, it was only 0.13. Oh. Well, it got to 0.31. I think the problem is it's not putting the force on the spine. Oh, wow. Ow. <laughs> so 0.43 before it gets to this stage. Oh, 0.13, wow. Carabiners are not often stronger when they are open versus closed. In case you don't know how carabiners work. Now let's test the PLA starting with 75%. Whoa, 0.5? Go PLA. That is what 75% fill looks like. So 75% infill and that infill pattern is what uh, Bamboo Labs calls gyroid. Uh, which is a three-dimensional kind of like interweaving pattern that distributes the stresses even-ish in all directions. All right, 50%. <laughs> all right, half a kilo. That's pretty good. Hey, it's consistently half a kilo. Interesting, it looks like the uh, fill percentage is not making a... We just tested three different fills, and honestly, they were pretty similar. 0 0.57, 0 0.55, all in that range. Uh, so does fill even matter? Let's try zero. All right, 0.3. Whoa, that's actually really cool. Okay, all right, 0% fill. He wasn't kidding, but that's pretty good for only a shell. If the infill percentage isn't that important uh, to the overall strength, what about the number of wall loops? One, two, 
three, and four. Uh, everything that we've seen so far had three wall loops uh, because that's what the creator of this carabiner recommended. Uh, they also recommended 50% infill, so these are all 50%, and let's see what uh, effect the loops have on it, starting at four loops. Oh, that's wildly consistent. Hang on for dear life. It's literally the tape, the tape is holding it together. Science. 0.44, okay, so it's less. It's almost like the person who designed this knew what they were talking about. Well, one loop, that's crazy. Shall we see how strong a real carabiner is? This thing is supposedly 24 kilonewtons strong. That's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> That missed the screen and my phone, thank God. All right, we're all, we're all good. <laughs> well, we learned something. Wow, look at this, it's 100% infill. What was the point of this video? We're seeing 3D printing pop up in a lot of industries. It's super useful for prototyping and as they like figure out the metal 3D printing, uh, people are thinking about it for actually like useful gear. So, is it useful yet? Depends what you use it for. <laughs> This is a 3D printed thing we also tested on the channel where this is where you can make your fingers stronger. <laughs> we tested all sorts of different variations and this is kind of was my introduction to 3D printing. What we'll do is give away one of these in this week's email that you go to hownonto.com slash sign up and you can enter to win doing that. If you want to go check out this episode, feel free to go there next. Hi! That's what happens when you only pull with two fingers.